who was Augustus Caesar. Although you might only know him from his brief appearance in Luke's account of the Nativity, from his, or from his role in the establishment of the Pax Romana, Augustus Caesar was one of the most influential people in the history of the world. The adopted son of Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar built upon his father's legacy and genius to establish himself as one of the most brilliant politicians in history. I will be focusing on his ruthlessness and his change to conservatism and his role as a master propagandist. First, as the chosen heir of Julius Caesar, Augustus saw himself as a continuation of his adopted father. The mere fact that Julius Caesar had been betrayed by his closest companions led young Augustus to pursue his path to power with utter utter and complete ruthlessness. Augustus's career began with the death of Caesar. For Caesarians, the assassination of Julius Caesar was almost like the passion of the Christ for Christians. The darkness came at around 6 o'clock. There was a comet for seven days, as was recalled by Plato. According to Brutus, Caesar rose from the dead to warn him. And this also offers insights into how it would have, they would have interpreted Jesus' death and resurrection. The killing was a transformative moment in the lives of his followers, and in the aftermath, it was apparent that anything was possible. Death seemed, his death seemed more like that of a spirit than that of just a man. Augustus and the Caesarians learned from Julius Caesar's, both learned from Julius Caesar's brilliant ascent to power and sheer ability to shape events. However, the assassination and the fact that it, he was assassinated by his friends and colleagues demonstrated the absolute ruthlessness that was needed to rule Rome. Caesar's will also helped prevent dislike of him, as he left much to the Roman people, and even more to Octavius, his nephew and adopted son. Octavius then changed his name to Gaius Julius Caesar Octavius, which is who we now know as Augustus. He had become um, the literal re-embodiment of his adoptive father. He knew he had... He now had the day to avenge his father's death. The duty to avenge his father's death. Quote, the underlying motive of every campaign was that Augustus felt it his duty, above all, to avenge Caesar and to keep his decrees in force, unquote, said Suetonius. In October 43 BC, with Lepidus and Mark Antony, Marcus Antony, he, no, Mark Antony, he founded the Second Triumvirate. It was recognized by the Senate in November, and it gave supreme authority, and they were given the supreme authority, and tasked with the duty of hunting down the conspirators. His acts to do so made him hated by the Roman people. Using nearly his his nearly unchecked power, he hunted down anyone who was even slightly involved. He once pulled a man's eyes out for suspicion of hiding a sword under his toga, and then had him killed. He wa but once he had defeated all of them, um, all involved in the assassination plot, he lost his purpose and the the triumvirate lost its purpose and fell apart. In 37 BC, Lepidus was kept out of the renewal. Then, the empire split equal, was, equal, was split equally between Octavius and Antony. Octavius took the west and Antony the east. This division also started the end of the partnership. 
Antony met Cleopatra the seventh of Egypt, and their love led to a war. The final war of the Roman Republic was the last of the civil wars between the was the last of the civil wars of the Roman Republic. After the Senate was declared war on Cleopatra, Antony betrayed the Roman government to fight on her side. After Augustus's victory at Actium, Cleopatra and Antony retreated, retreated to Alexandria. El when at the end of the is Antony asked for peace, but Octavian didn't demanded suicide um, to commit suicide. When word was sent to Antony that Cleopatra had died, Antony began to prepare himself. He stabbed himself in the stomach and fell on a couch, but his wound was shallow, so he didn't die. When he was accidentally told that Cleopatra wasn't dead either, he needed to see her. In the end, he died after reaching her, and she committed, soon committed suicide by a smuggled snake bite. Point two. Having su successfully avenged his father's death and defeat having defeated every competitor in his way, Augustus now needed to settle down to rule the empire he now he had conquered. He did so by seeking to erase his history and rebrand as a patriotic conservative, seeking to restore the good old days of Rome, of early Rome. Much of his later career was used to hide his earlier career. He realized to rebuild, um, he needed to return to old-fashioned conservatism. Lar one of his largest focuses was on the public and private lives of the upper class. One of the, his concerns to rebuild was due to moral decay. Many believed that part of the reason for the decline was the decline of the public's morals. Many citizens felt that, quote, their traditional virtues of austere duty and healthy poverty were being eroded, unquote, that historian Anthony Everett. To fix this, uh, he made anti-adultery laws and punished unmarried men and married couples without children. His new rules weren't only for the public either. Julia was the name of his daughter because she was an alcoholic and didn't but she was an alcoholic and she didn't really want to marry. So he sent her to Panditeria where there was no men or alcohol. Visitors were only allowed after the, he was given a detailed description of them and her only consolation was when her mother went to visit the island. When she was, this situation was brought up, Augustus said he wished he had neither wife nor child. He also tried to return to old religion. He, he brought back the return of games. Uh, he built temples and an altar of peace and restarted traditional events, celebrating commitment to piety and morality. In 12 BC, he was appointed a pont as the Pontifex Maximus, and he is said to have gone through Pasiotis when he died. Well, not really died because of Pasiotis, but yes. Um, and third, Julius Caesar's flirtations with kingship and his love of purple hardened up opposition against him and helped him has and helped hasten the plot to assassinate him. Augustus, however, was wary of meeting a similar fate, though he became a master propagandist whose calculated displays of simplicity were designed to demonstrate a connection to the common people. He called himself the first citizen and appealed to old-fashioned patriotism by making a huge effort to, res 
to retrieve lost legions. His reputations led to the Indians and Scythians to return them while asking for friendship. Quote, the Parthians, too, readily yielded to him when he laid claim to Armenia, uh, and at, at his demand surrendered the standards which they had taken from Marcus Cr Crassus, unquote, said Suetonius. He wore cloth spun by the women in his family. He ensured that his daughter's education included extensive training in weaving, because he saw it as symbolic of older, better times. Not only did he wear homespun cloth, but he also used his family to promote its popularity. Similar, his hobby of fishing was also a calculated effort to appear an everyman. He cultivated simple peasant, a simple peasant persona in his food choices. He encouraged it too. He let it be widely known that when he wasn't fasting, he on only ate simple foods. He only ate about an ounce of bread and a few grapes or dates a day. He also sometimes had a small fish or handmade moist cheeses, such as what we would think of cottage cheese today. He also didn't drink a whole lot of alcohol. His own home wasn't even lavishly furnished. He spent most of his money on pub public works and projects for the good of his people. Augustus was one of the most consummate politicians of the, his age and one of the most skillful politicians to have ever existed. Terrified of meeting the same ignoble fate as his stepfather, Augustus devoted his life to avenging the death, his death and punishing those who had re, who had rebelled against Julius Caesar. His ruthless streak gave way with age to, cons, to a conservative perspective which sought to make Rome great again by returning to their old morals. When, when this was combined with a brilliant, his brilliant ability to present himself as a simple down to earth Roman Augustus's political career became a model for all future politicians. Thank you.